Thank you, Coach. Enjoy the interview. Okay. All right, Ben. I'm going to unmute you. Welcome back, my trading warrior brother. How you doing, Dale? Great to, great to hear you. Yeah, yeah, great to have you back, man, especially, you know, with markets making um, – New all-time highs here, uh, blow-off action happening here, and I took a look at some of your work that you tweeted, and uh, you know maybe uh, we could start there. Wherever you want to start, uh, you know how to share your screen, right? Yep, I'm getting getting it up and running right now. You liked my carrot top joke. It was great. You're okay. really funny today, boy. Uh, anyway, you're you're anyway, on. <laughs> a lot of, I think, 30 people left. It was, it was not politically correct. Okay, so um, here we are. Uh, why don't you explain to people watching uh, what these grids mean and what you're thinking here? Yeah, let, we'll, we'll get to the to the grid charts. Uh, I wanted okay. to, to switch it up a little bit and start with something uh sort of tactical and practical that hopefully uh, the listeners can use and go out and, uh, and make some money with it right away. Yeah, go we'll, ahead. Make your commercial at the beginning. And then we'll get into the, the <laughs> show. Um, so every day um, we, we tweet out uh, these things we call the plus three fuse lines and they're, they're dynamic levels that um, seasoned traders, you know, have jumped on right away. They know, it can give them uh, a way of adding to their edge or whatever they're using in trading to help them uh, limit risk and capture short-term profits. We, we get a lot of questions from sort of the newer traders or people who don't understand them say, well, how do you use them? What do they do? So we wanted to spend, I wanted to spend a couple minutes going over some of the patterns that we've noticed and looking at these things for a couple years. Sure. There's, there's about six reliable patterns that show up every day. And, and if you're day trading and you can, and you study these patterns and you can recognize them, you can create a significant edge in, in what you're doing uh, from a day trading basis. Um, the first one, and, and, and Dale, I'll ask you the question because you, you're a veteran and you know this. What's just as important about knowing as knowing when to trade? What's just as important as knowing when to trade? When not to. Absolutely. Uh, my experience, the thing that's destroyed accounts for me and ruined performance and wiped out weeks or months of work is, is trading and over-trading at a time when you shouldn't be in the market. So one of the patterns that, that we identified and is, is critically important for any trader to, to recognize whether they're using our stuff or someone else's stuff or their own stuff is if the market's chopping, you got to stay out. And when we generally you know until you look backwards, well, and this, this is the thing. It's, it's never, it's never as clean as, as anybody shows you in a textbook. And we're, I'm going to show you a couple examples of how muddled it can be. But one of the things that, that, that we try to do and, and successful traders that I've studied and read about and, you know, in, in my journey come across, they all limit risk, right? They get into yeah. the markets and they limit risk. They, they know quickly if they're wrong and they get out. And so what, what we've done is this, this pattern we call the misfire is where you cross the fuse line more than two times, the market is telling you and signaling to you that there's going to be chop. So when you see a cross and then a cross back and then another cross, it's, it's a warning sign to you that you're most likely going to be in chop. And here's an example. And by the way, these examples that I'm showing are not sort of hand-picked examples and we're not creating something. These are all from the end of the day slides that we tweet out showing what happened with the fuse. It's called like the daily recap, I call it. Okay. So in here you see that we're coming nice. into the open. And, and the other thing about, about if you're going to try to use these lines. The, What's the time frame on this? This sure. is four minute. Okay. Why four? Because the, Four minutes aligns with the fact that the earth moves one degree every four minutes. I, I knew there was a reason. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, so the, the, um, I feel the earth <laughs> moving under my feet. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so here, here's the open is, is denoted by the green line using these fuse lines. It's best to use them 
within the first few hours of the open because you get the most energy in the market uh, after the overnight session and you get a lot of, lot of powerful moves. So here you can see coming into the open, we crossed down, we crossed up, we crossed down a third time. The, the, the remainder of the day and the balance of the day was chop. Yeah. And so the key is, let's say, let's say you took the trade here and you said, okay, we came back to the line, we held it, we're going back up. You know you're wrong here. So what did you risk? You bought here, you sold here. You see, right, move your cursor. All right. So, sorry. So you bought, okay. if you, 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 if let's say you bought, you tried to buy this here. We, we right. pulled away. It looks good. Yeah. It comes back. You cross again, you're out. Okay. So this is, this is the thing. It's not going to be a hundred percent right. Anytime. Nothing is, there's no certainty in the markets, but you got probabilities in your favor with low risk. You cut it right there. Okay. Another example, cross down, cross up, cross down again, we chopped all day. So this line can give you the, the reference point of where you know you're wrong, number one, or where the, market's, the information from the market is. It's not strong, it's not weak, it's chopping. How big is their green range in handles? This range here, the green this, range or here? Yeah, the range that you're, the line that you're talking about, uh, that green um, rectangle. Yeah, that, that area. The actual range is a, is a specific point. I mean, the actual uh, line is a specific point, 2988. The yeah. range here is about a half a point. Okay. So you're, you're really tight in terms of your stop. Okay. The next pattern we, we, uh, we've named the Hellfire. And, and we call it hellfire because, as you know, if you ever get caught trading in a triangle, it's hell. Um, but it's a classic triangle pattern. The, the pattern appears, generally, it can be above the fuse line. It can be below the fuse line. Here's an example above. Here's an example below. It can also be across the fuse line. And we'll show you a couple examples. But the key here is, here's, here's one right after the opening. We're in, a tr we're in a triangle. We're crossing the fuse line. As soon as we can break out of the triangle, which is right here, we break out of the triangle, we have a little pullback towards, towards the fuse line, you know you can trade. You've held the line, you can trade this reversal here, and your stop is below the line. And you can capture this sort of move. And again, this is a four-minute chart, so it's a fast move, and it's one that you can capture with low risk. Here's, like another, here, yeah, here's another example of a hellfire. Same sort of situation. You got your triangle, you break the triangle, you come back. See how that, the low yeah. of that bar stayed on top of the line? Yeah, nice test. Green light, go. Okay. Next one, ricochet. Ricochet is a simple pattern. It's real easy to recognize. You stay on one side of the fuse, you pull back to the fuse, and you go. A couple quick examples. Coming into the open here, we're above the fuse, pull back to it, go. Okay. Next one, same sort of thing. The open, we're above the fuse, pull back to it, and then we go. Nice. You, know, you call it fuse. Other people would call it pivot points, right? That's right. It, okay. it acts the same way. And um, uh, when you come up with these, are you looking left? Well, and that's a great point, and I, I should, have, should have mentioned that in the beginning. you got to know whether you're you know, day trading a one minute, 30 second chart, four minutes, whatever yeah. you're using, you've got to know where you are in a move in the bigger picture. So we constantly reference the 30 minute chart, the, the hourly, the four hour, the daily, you have to have a bigger picture view of where you are. You can't, you can't get so zoomed in on a four minute that you don't realize where you are in a move. So it's a, that's a terrific point. Okay. Um, here's another pattern. It's called a hang fire. It's, it's got the, all the feelings of a false break. Uh, the example here shows you're below the line, you break above it, and then you, you collapse. Here's the op opposite side, the inverse of that. Oh, have you noticed a lot of those lately? Yes. Here's, here's one that shows you. Right after the open, we're above yeah. the fuse. We come down, do a false break with the previous low, and then take off and you get a fantastic move higher. Where's the trigger? on that on this one let's go back to that yeah so your trigger back would above be, that yellow yellowish area right in here yep yeah okay. as soon as we reverse the, this bar reverses you're you're in here okay but uh are you in 
before you know how the candle is going to close? Well, since we're dealing with four minute, you um, have to be right. You, you have to be, or you can, it's uh, what we'll do is I'll look at, I mean, you didn't get hurt waiting for that bar to finish. Hell no. It and still I, worked. You didn't, you didn't get the edge, but you had more confirmation, right? That, that's right. And, and I think it's, you know, you can you use trend lines, right? Trend lines help us identify where we're, we're actually breaking out. So you, you draw trend lines, you, you can use a one bar reversal. You can use, some people want to enter, you know, there's many different ways of entering and that, that gets back to a trader's style and risk tolerance, right? It's, is how you want to enter. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one. One of our attendees is saying, please use cursor when you're talking about it. Okay. Um, Here's the flashover. This is this is an, a, a a very interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is the um, this is the uh, another example of the the false break pattern. We go up a little over the line, come back and reverse. Here you got a Dale. You got a nice retest that you can uh -huh. buy into the line. So you could have either bought a reversal off there. You could have bought the line and then you ride it back down. Okay. One toe over the line, sweet Jesus. <laughs> Here's right. here's a pattern. This I have is a, a song for every pattern. I know it's fantastic. Oh, uh, the musical accompaniment I wasn't <laughs> expecting, but it's great. Here here's a pattern we call the flashover, where's it, where you have a triangle above. You know what these are also some people call them flat bottomed or flat top triangles. Descending. Yep, descending, ascending. Yeah. Uh, here's a couple examples. Perfect triangle under the line. Break above it. You can buy the breakout, you can buy the pullback. Either way, you don't take any heat and you're in profitable territory with a nice tight stop right below there. Okay. Here's another example. Flat flat top triangle on the line, breakout, big move higher. Yeah. Um, this is the last one, the spring. The spring is where we cross the line, pull back to the line and go. Classic uh, A, B, C, D pattern. Everybody knows A, B, C, Ds, right? Okay, yeah. So here we go. Above the line, pull back, go. You had multiple uh, opportunities to trade that there. Yep, here we come down below the line, pull back into the line, can't get above, can't stay above, come down. And you could you could buy here. You could buy this pullback again. It's your it's your style and your risk tolerance and and the, how aggressive you want to be. Um, and that covers those patterns. So what we're going to do is we're going to put put together videos and things and put those up because I think studying the daily recaps, looking at these patterns, and being able to identify them is a great way to create an edge if you're a short term trader. Yeah, uh, the, uh, I would say that's enough patterns to. Uh, and how many different instruments with these patterns are you guys covering? Right now, we're just doing ES. Uh, but, but there's some people that trade the spy options using it. Some people okay. trade the futures. Okay. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to, to take advantage of it. All right. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, this is the cycle work. This is the stuff that, that you like, Dale, and I'll, let's, get, let's get into this. I really this. like it. Yeah. So here we On we've Sunday, talked, I say – Rejoice and be glad instead of saying this is the day the Lord has made. Go rejoice and be glad. We can trade the cycles. That's right. The Lord has made. So yeah, this is nice. They're right. fantastic. And 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 one of the things for people that that don't study cycles or haven't studied them, remember you're not looking for things to be exactly the same. What you're looking for is connections through cycles that will then create an environment and an, and a, and an atmosphere where you're going to get similar type of action. You're going to, they're going to, they, they rhyme. They don't exactly repeat. So that's the caveat with cycles and studying them for 20 years. That's what I've, the main takeaway I have from them. So here I, I've, Dale and I've been talking about this since the beginning of the year. I've been watching this thing for a long time. There's an analog and the cycles that we're, currently experiencing now in present day are connected to the period of the early 1970s. Um, the evidence of similarities that, that we've talked about include uh, President Nixon at the time in the early 70s was at war with the Federal Reserve. He was pressuring them to lower rates. He actually got them to lower rates into the election. 
he sort of created the 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 battle between him and the Fed. And if the economy was bad, it was going to be the Fed's fault for not cutting. Rates. You know, Ben. One thing um, I just thought of, and I, you know, one of the reasons I interrupt is when I have a thought, I want to get it out, or I'll f I'll forget to ask. Is uh, in fact, I I already did. So. Um, Go ahead. I'll remember. Okay. So Nixon was, was, was it at battle with the fed? Fast forward to present okay, day. I got it. Go ahead. Nixon and the, um, Bretton Woods accord happened under his watch where he took us off the gold standard. Any so parallels that, that you could possibly see, um, with the current period we're in, could it be a currency reset? Could there be anything out there that, it, you know, besides him being impeached, that was one of the most dramatic economic monetary events of the century is when we went straight fiat. And you know what, Dale, I think, I think that's an excellent point. I hadn't made that connection, but as you were talking about I, I it, I never thought about it until well, think now. About, I, I think, think about, about, you know, this. I see the parallels, but yeah, think about that, this, what about though? that? That, that's exactly what's happening now. He took us off the gold standard so that the, the government could print money. We are now in fiat on steroids. Yeah. Because they're, they're doing, they're doing so things. So what, what, could, what could President Trump do that might be analogous to what happened with Bretton Woods? We'll I think he's, think I think it, he's huh? already doing it with, by, by running a trillion-dollar deficit. You know, and okay. are we going to get negative interest rates? Are we going to get this MMT garbage that people are talking about? I mean, you know, who knows where it's going to lead? But a I currency think reset. A, a currency reset. I, I mean, I think all that stuff is on the table now. What was unthinkable a decade ago is, is all on the table. Okay. Um, so I, I, I agree okay. that the, there's another connection there. Okay. Other connections. Nixon was at war with the press. The press was the enemy of the state. Trump is actually, uh, it sounds like he's even more at war with the press than Nixon was. Um, in the markets, there was the nifty 50. There were these 50 growth stocks that everybody had to own. Today, it was the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Um, the president at the time, Nixon was the first president to ever visit mainland China. He, he opened up relations with China. Right now, we have a president where everything is about him and China and the relationship with China. So the, the connections are unreal. The, the recent ones you just mentioned, Trump's going to get impeached. Nixon opened it. Uh, Trump will close it. That may be it, right? That's, that's the essence of the rhyming, right? Okay. Uh, we started with Bretton Woods, and now we're at the extreme of the experiment that finally fails. Absolutely. Okay. I, I think those connections there. And the, the other one, Dale, that we hadn't talked about before is – and it's an obvious one, social unrest. Yeah. The period of the early 70s around that Vietnam War was, there was tremendous social unrest and social upheaval. We're yeah. going through the same thing today. So the, the connections are there. Now, now we say, okay, what's going on with the markets? Here's, here's, here's where what happened in 72 to 75. Yeah. But here's where we are now. My contention is we've put in, six points we're, we're now putting in point number seven okay. uh the i'm i was expecting a high somewhere in the 31 37 31 37 on the es area 31 35 area uh, we may not make it up there but somewhere in this area and in this time frame we're going to put in that high we're going to get a, a decent do you want to know when when tuesday on the full moon and a day before the public hearings and two days before President Trump opens up another front in the trade war with EU sanctions on autos. Mm -hmm. And you know what? There's a nice cycle hit middle of next week. So okay. it's all in the window. So we're going to so get a pull excited. I yeah, we're going to get a pullback, whether it's a consolidation, a sharp pullback or what we don't yeah. know. After that, Boom. If if we continue to follow this analog, we're going to put in a a blow off type of top high into next spring. Um, and wouldn't it be great, Dale? You'd love this. Wouldn't it be great if it was around the uh, 
vernal equinox. Yeah, spring. It could be in that time frame. So that's, that's, that's the speculative path we're looking at. You know, you're not the only one that's pointing towards spring, which gives me conviction. You know, I've interviewed over a thousand guys and some of them are, you know, have bents of cycles. They don't like to talk about it because they're on CNBC and that would be too voodoo-ish for them <laughs> right. to talk about. You know, they would go, oh God, this guy wears a tinfoil hat. We're not going to have him on again. But Mark Newton's a very good cycle analyst. He didn't talk about him a lot. But when I had Mark on, he was saying second uh, cycles for him didn't turn negative until next spring. Yep. Um, I think late March, late April, in that March-April time frame, we should yeah. put in a, a serious high there. And as always, whether you're doing cycles or whatever type of analysis you're doing, you got to look at price and price has to confirm. And so far, events and price are pointing to this as a path. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I was warning about a throw over in the NASDAQ here short term. But when you look at that megaphone that you have there, Ben, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the throw over that you're looking for um, it's going to be pretty massive. So massive. when we get to point nine, you know, uh, you're probably not going to be late if you don't short it up there. But I would say back in the net megaphone after this spring would be a pretty good sign that there's some danger in risk. If, if, this, is the, if this is what we're looking at, some variation of this, I would yeah. agree 100%. Yeah, interesting. Yep. Okay. So uh, let's go. Let's go to now some of the the tactical stuff on the monthly. I, I want to show this to show that here's a major breakout. Right, this is a major breakout. Um, some sort of pullback to test this line. Maybe maybe our that's our point eight, um, which would put us around you know twenty nine ninety twenty nine eighty something like that, okay. just under three thousand, and then that could be the launch point. Okay. Uh, uh, zooming in a little bit, here's your weekly. Again, another breakout. This yeah. move is a breakout. We have room now. We've created air enough to pull back and retest here. So, watching what happens on this on this pullback is going to be critical to seeing. Okay, are we on path to to hit that point nine, or is something else going on? Great point. Shorter term, here's, here's a 60-minute chart that I use. I, I post this every day to help people. And the reason I'm posting this is to show the market is sort of a limitless environment, right? It can do anything at any time. And what I think our job and the analysis that we have to do is we have to squeeze down the area that it operates in and say, okay, if it does this within this area, I can trade it and I can have an edge and I can know where I'm wrong pretty quickly. And how and much this, time in the grids in each grid? Each one of these? Yeah. It's uh, and I, then I the smaller ones. Yeah, the smaller ones are half. So this, this, I think this is a square of 60. So this would be okay. 60 trading days and this would be uh -huh. 30. All right. Uh, but this gives you, it basically gives you the geometry of a square and allows you to sort of say, okay, if we stay above this, it's bullish. I got support here. I got resistance here. I got support here. If I'm on the other side, I got resistance. So it's just another way of, of narrowing down the area and creating an edge. Scott wants to know why 60 days. Uh, just it, different markets and different time frames will resonate with different frequencies. You just have to find the one that resonates, and then and then put it on and watch the watch watch how price reacts to it. Okay, it's well, not always nice, sixty. Uh, nice formation in beans. Yeah, here's my, here, I'm going to quickly go over a couple markets that uh, just to to review what I see and what's going on. Here's monthly beans. This is set up for a massive breakout if we can get over this. Uh, this trend, yeah. this descending trend line. Yeah. Here you can see we've, we were respecting this support, this geometric yeah. support resistance on multiple times. Got a nice little false break here. So we're testing this line. A breakout here would be massive. Beans in the teens again. And uh, it used to be a, a war cry at the Board of Trade. Is that right? Because it never happened. I mean, we'd get till 12, you know, 1280, 1250. And finally, you know, it happened early in this millennium that we had beans in the teens. That used to be a war, a war chant at the mm -hmm. I like Now that. we could say uh, uh, beans in the 20s wow. coming up. Yep. That's what nice. your uh, return lines say here, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, look at this. This is the daily, same thing. Respecting geometric support resistance, pull back to the previous highs. 
this is uh, as long as we can hold this level here. Yeah, we could launch. We could yeah. launch on beans. I'd like to buy in the low nines yep. in the next month or so. Here's gold. A lot of people asking oh, about gold, gold, interested in gold. Um, I'm very bullish on gold longer term. Um, we did have. What do you do here then? I do. I grilled. I grilled Steve. So you're a bull long term. Yep. Does that prevent? Does your bias prevent you from getting short for a move to fourteen hundred, fourteen twenty, because you're bullish? Um, I would. I'd have to see this support resistance break for me to, okay. to for me to want to get short gold. Right okay. now, we, we did a perfect ABC D down off the high. Well, you know, okay. Right into right. support resistance. This is I don't want anything to do with this because this is a, an account killer, sloppy choppy, yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Um, but if there's a cycle hit in early the uh, early December, um, I want to see how it reacts into that. If we can hold these technical levels and price price confirms by not getting weaker or getting below this support resistance, I mean okay. I could see targets in sixteen fourteen, seventeen forty four, all the way up to two thousand. Okay. I mean, bold is very bullish long term. Okay, and I I will acknowledge that you did an interview and you had that uh, horizontal line. I think it was thirteen sixty for the mm -hmm. breakout, mm -hmm. and you said I'm waiting for this breakout, and it never looked back. Here it is, right here. This was it. Yeah, great. There's your breakout. Back. There's your retest. There's your go. I mean, this stuff. Isn't it nice that I only remember your good idea? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. I, 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 anyway, my bank wire number is blah, 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 blah. It's like I, I put in one of my tweets I sent out. <laughs> I'm a shill. Talking about our talk today. I said, uh, often wrong, never in doubt. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's crude. Um, crude has been in massive chop since June. Yeah. Uh, but again, look at us. We're holding this important support. Oh, it, it'll take that out. It might. It, it very with the, well for, might. With your uh, pullback in eight um, in S and P's, I'm anticipating a breakdown under those lows. It might. Um, anyway, because it's more economically sensitive than gold, to li a little different animal, and so are soybeans. But I think there's there could be a problem with crude. Mm -hmm. If if we take out this support and we stay yeah. under it, I'm 100% with you. If we can get above this this 57, 10, 20 area and hold above this, 64 mm -hmm. to 69 about is about 58 impossible. and a half to 61, eight back from that big drop. Mm -hmm. So we'll see next week. We'll see what happens Tuesday. Yeah, right now we're in chop. Um, okay. Notes, 10 year notes. Uh, interest rates are a big deal right now. Uh, yeah. clearly and bonds are um, uh, in in a weak position to say the least uh, we had good geometry at the high both on a daily and a weekly basis mm -hmm. um, this ABC down completes at about 12805 so that's a reasonable target for this if we can just pull enough back to clean out the stops under the lows from the first break that's it right there and if okay. we do look look at what we have here we have we we'll stop right on the previous highs yeah. so it it it's in the short term. I think we're we're weak, and we gotta we gotta yeah. watch for short term weakness. But this thing could could again rally up. And if you want to tie it up into the um, into the other markets, if we're gonna make a moonshot high on on equities, yeah, this it probably comes down. down. And then if if equities are gonna turn and go down, this probably comes up and makes new all time highs. Yeah, at some point. I like I like the jigsaw puzzle you put together today, Ben. So um, we could wrap it, and um, you want to wrap it with this slide, Mark Douglas trading in the zone. I love, you know, Mark. Mark is great. I think I think I I want to spend more time on that. So let's just wrap it today because I okay. think what what and you did this a few weeks ago. You had someone on who was talking about trader psychology. I yeah. think it is critical. I think it's one of the most important things that can help people get breakthroughs in their trading. It's more valuable than any indicator in the world. Yeah. It's, it's all in our heads. It, it's you got to get the right mindset. If you're going to be successful, you can have the greatest tools in the world. If you're, if your head is not right, you're not going to be successful. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll just quickly tell you a book that, that changed my trading. Uh, it was Mark Douglas book trading in the zone. 
If you, okay. if you get that book and you read it and you can absorb the material and you can, you can implement what he tells you in terms of how you should think about the market, it will have the most dramatic effect you've ever seen on your, on your trading. Okay, Scott wants to know how he could look over your shoulder. So why don't you tell people how to reach you? Well, the um, right now everything we're doing is free. We're putting everything out there. We're we're we don't know what we're going to do with this. This is this has been a project that we started. And I know you're just waiting for the Nobel Peace Prize for humanitarianism, <laughs> and then you'll charge two hundred a month. But once the, you've been awarded that thing and use that for marketing purposes as God, you know, look at what we've done for free. Now, follow open your wallets now, buddy. Follow us at plus three forecast <laughs> and you'll see the stuff we do. We put it out every day. It's um, it's really good and it's, it'll help you. And the, the, the key thing about it is we're not putting something out that we don't use. We eat our own cooking. This is what we do. We trade this stuff every day, um, both in futures and options. So uh, I think if, and what we're trying to do is make sure that people understand how to use it, how, how it can help them. And then you said this on, on many of your shows, you have to adapt whatever it is you're using to your own style. So yeah. Schwager it, said uh, the most important thing when I interviewed him, I said, what's the most important advice you can give? And he said, find a trading style that suits your personality. That's I, Jack Schwager, who's interviewed all the wizards. So, And I think that's, that's what you do. You take, take these tools, take the things that, that Dale teaches you every day and the speakers he has comes on, talks about and, and mold them to, to fit what you're doing. You know, fit what you're doing, fit what you're comfortable with. Not everybody can trade the same way, but everybody can trade successfully. If you have an edge, if you execute your plan and, and, and think of, of this game and not in terms of I have to predict, I got to be right, I got to be, you know, this or that or any of the stuff that, you know, you have in your head, look at it as, as probabilities, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be wrong. You're going to be right on some trades. As long as you have an edge, as long as you maintain uh, discipline in how you enter and you're consistent and you minimize risk, you'll be successful. And using risk capital so you're not emotional. So uh, my, I have to tell you, Ben, another great interview, your best yet. So uh, thank you, my trading warrior brother, for edifying face today. I appreciate you having me on, Dale. I, I really enjoy it, and, and I hope the, the material we put out there is helpful for people because it, it's tough. It's a tough business. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy or it's, you, know, you push a button, you make money. Yeah, that's, that can happen. It's a tough thing. It takes a lot of work, and yeah. having people give you a hand up is, uh, is definitely a good thing. You know, when I uh, first became a Series 3 broker, a veteran pulled me aside and said, kid, this is a tough way to make an easy buck. Mm-hmm. He was right. Absolutely. So thank you, buddy. My trading warrior brother, everyone, Ben Maldonado. Follow him uh, at Plus3 Forecast. And I don't remember your personal one, but th you can reach him here. And good hunting, Ben, during the fall season. And, you know, we'll be doing this again. Thanks, Dale. All right, everyone. All the best. Uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, so that's a wrap, everyone. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Uh We'll see everyone to wrap up the week tomorrow. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome, everybody. Yeah, it's our mission here at Forex Analytics to build up and edify traders every day. Adios. <laughs>